You wake up. There's nothing but silence and you're all alone. You notice a faint light, the baby sun, surrounded by gas and dust everywhere. Suddenly, you realize there are many others like you. They all recognize that you are the largest with the strongest gravity, which naturally makes them smash into you. And now, it's even causing you to be bloated from all the gas you're attracting. Well, you've only been alive a few million years and your massive size is already causing you pain. Like you're the skeleton of a contestant on My 600 Pound Life. You have no shape yet, just a roaring storm of gas and rock, colliding, compressing, and collapsing inward. Something else slams into you. Hard. It's a chunk of rock the size of a small moon. Hey, watch where you're... Before the thought can even finish forming, you absorb it. Oh wow, you're gigantic. Turns out you took all of the sun's leftovers from his birth, and in fact you'll own 70% of the mass of all planets in the solar system. Does that make you the king? Maybe. But first you need to see who else exists around here. You notice your first moon, Ganymede. So cute. You're made of the same hydrogen and helium as the sun, but when you try to ask him where he came from, he just ignores you. Because apparently, he's the king around here, and he can do that. Well, it's been 10 million years, and there goes the only positive dream you've ever had. You know it right there. Your name will be Jupiter, and you will take over the solar system. But not in the way that you might think. Why are you not a star like the sun if you're made from the same material? And why are you just a planet and not the center of attention like him? It's time to find out. You begin moving closer to the sun, taking Ganymede with you, of course. You're going to show him why you deserve to be in control. But suddenly, you get pulled back. Turns out you didn't form by yourself. Saturn is also there and wanted to save you from certain death. She explains how no one can defeat the sun. He's just too big, even for you. If you try, you'll end up like that one exoplanet who is now shaped like a football. And thanks to this grand tech hypothesis, you survive. See, around him, all the other baby planets are forming too. Rocky ones, icy ones, tiny ones. But everything you do is clumsy. And turns out you actually just kind of threw half of them into the sun and out of the solar system with your migration. Oops. Your wild size and gravity actually helped stabilize the orbits of the surviving planets. I mean, you killed the rest, but you accidentally organized the solar system while trying to mess it up. Task failed successfully. Now that you're farther away, the sun has to yell, but he just says, Thanks for cleaning up the mess, janitor. Excuse me, janitor? Sure, you just accidentally cleaned up the mess, but that doesn't mean he can talk to you like that. In fact, your gravity literally makes him wobble like a goat on a unicycle. Yes, that's right. You cause the sun to wobble around a gravitational point. But he doesn't care and is ignoring you again. Well, that aside, you and all the other planets form and settle into their final places, and you gain a lot of moons, like 95 or something, with more and more always being detected. You'll never know all their names, but you won't attach to them anyway, except for your favorites. The largest is of course Ganymede, who has been with you so far, and is the only moon to have its own magnetic field. Then there is Io, a firecracker of a world with many volcanoes. So fun. The third largest is Europa, who just stares at you with her underwater ocean, thinking she's more valuable because of it. And Callisto, yeah, he's kind of beat up from asteroids, but he'll live a long time, like a family turtle that gets passed down three generations. Now that everything has settled down and that your chances of beating the sun are basically zero, what is your actual purpose around here? Surely you aren't really going to be the janitor of the solar system, right? Well, before you find out, you see that Earth is going through a hundred different variations of faces from her tectonic plates, and the sun made a barrier to keep you away from him. A barrier you have to maintain. Which means the sun's forcing you to force yourself to live in the cold where you are minus 145 degrees Celsius. When is this asshole going to stop? Trying to stay positive, at least your insides are 24,000 degrees, even hotter than the surface of the sun. But not even that helps your surface be less cold because you're just a bloated planet filled mostly with gas. You're by far the biggest planet, rotating the fastest with the biggest storm in the solar system, and even if it is dying, you're still the heaviest. Which means that you can control the rest of the planets and objects, right? You don't have to simply clean up after them. After all, you've only been alive a couple hundred million years, and controlling things seems to be the purpose of life. You claim to be the leader of the gas giants in all the planets, Neptune yells, you're only big because you were born first, and doesn't that mean thanks to your gravity, you're still the janitor? Well, you tell him that janitors don't have rings. Are the rings in the room with us now? Okay, well, maybe here they have a point. Your pathetic dust rings are made from dead moons and rocks, so you're not as important as you thought, and you are literally surrounded by trash. But maybe, just maybe, being a janitor then is not that bad.
You're 318 times the mass of the Earth, after all. Everything should orbit in fear and respect you. You protect the other planets from dangers with your large gravity and huge magnetic field, which gives you massive aurora. Or as the kids might call it today, massive aura. Yes, yes, for all these reasons, they should worship you. Your radiation is so intense it makes the rest of the solar system's radiation look like a gentle tanning session. In fact, poor Aya over there is getting blasted with about 3,600 rem per day. That's enough to turn any human into a glowing puddle in a matter of hours. Sounds powerful, right? But four billion years go by in an instant. Well, for the other planets. For you, it actually felt a lot longer. Because you're a f***ing janitor and no one cared about anything that you just glazed yourself about. All right, that's enough of the Gen Z references. You thought you were in control, but you simply are not. How is that possible? You give out more radiation than you receive from the sun by a lot. Does no one care? Ultimately, you realize the sun is simply concerned with his galactic journey, talking to other stars like Vega in the distance, and you're doing his job while he just pays the bills and lights up the planets. He gets all the credit, but you hold everything together. You clean up the messes, and what do you get? Nothing, except random comets that simply collide with you. How is this fair? You've now realized your life is just monotonous and miserable, and the only way out of the situation is through migration. But thanks to Saturn, the Sun, and the laws of physics, you aren't going anywhere. Ever. Which means you have no free will, and your gravity just protects everyone else, even if you don't want to. Not to mention managing all these moons is like herding cats in the dark. A light bulb goes off. But what if you could be a star? Saturn laughs. As if that many unlikely things would ever happen in a row for you to achieve that dream. It's like the 600 pound contestant from before rejecting a slice of free pizza. But this is something that mathematically could happen to you. It's a non-zero probability provided everything happens perfectly, no matter how unlikely. But right now, it actually seems like it might. What's that over there? A fat black hole flies just close enough to the solar system and slings you out. Because of your powerful gravity, on the way out you smash into the Earth and the entire solar system is thrown into chaos. But who cares? They thought you were just a janitor after all, and now you're a free-floating planet. Rogue. See ya, losers. You're drifting alone in the vast emptiness of space. I mean, it's pitch black, and it'll be hard to find a new home, but with no sun to orbit, no planets to protect, and no moons to nag you, it's just you and your dream of becoming a star to take on the sun. How you get back to the solar system is a problem for another day. This will all take a few billion years, but all you need are a few dead brown dwarfs, which are failed stars that are still much heavier than you, but they are the key to your evolution. Fortunately, the black hole left behind a lot of gas. You spent the next few million years eating that up and gaining around 13 times the mass you used to be. An excellent bulk. You keep floating through free space, eating gas, but you start to feel funny. Your core has started to compress and you can feel the pressure rising. Turns out you are now just the right mass to start a little bit of fusion. Basically using your hydrogen atoms to make some energy. Nowhere near big enough to be a star, but enough to turn you into a brown dwarf that has a subtle reddish brown glow. You like that. Your core reaches 2 million degrees and you feel warm for the first time in your life. You focus on finding more gas, which is easy to do because, well, the black hole left a trail of crumbs behind him like Hansel and Gretel, and it's in your gravitational path. Once you've eaten that up, you're only 20 times your original mass though. That's not enough. You need to be at least 80 times your mass to become a star. This will take a while, but wait, look, another extremely unlikely thing has happened. You see a herd of brown dwarfs smaller than you, all sitting in the same place like they're trying to get into their free-floating planet club and they're being rejected. That's because they're not really stars and they're not really planets. You hesitate as you get closer. These things are still huge, almost like you. You can't just absorb them, right? It'd be like watching a hippo eating a hippo. Well, it has to be done. You start sucking slowly, consuming the tiniest ones just like a black hole would. And as you do that, you gain more and more mass. More mass, more gravity, more pull. One by one, they fall into you. As long as you are theoretically enough times bigger than them and can stretch them past what's called the roche lobe limit. You know, hypothetically. 40 times, 50, 60, 70, 80. You feel the pressure. It's immense, painful, like a cramp from eating too many jelly beans, which you kinda just did. Your core collapses inward with a temperature of three million degrees. Fusion has ignited. 
That's when the hydrogen inside you smashes together so hard that it turns into a new element, helium, and releases a ton of energy. It's like an unstoppable space fire that keeps burning as long as you have fuel. And thanks to your feast, you have a lot. You are no longer Jupiter, the planet. You are Jupiter, the star. You are a red dwarf. The absolute smallest real star possible, but a star nonetheless. Oh, you thought you would get bigger like the sun to take him on? Ha <laughs> ha no. You're only 1.2 times bigger than you were as a planet, and you only have 0 0.08 times the mass of the sun. The sun's core is also 5 times hotter than you and is 99.9% .9 brighter. You wanted this, right? You wanted to be a star? Well, you are. You could just leave behind the solar system, keep roaming, be a rogue star, find a rogue planet and create your own home. One that lives for trillions of years, unlike the sun who's gonna die after 11 billion. Maybe you could even have some humans of your own. That sounds nice. Wait, what's that smell? You wake up. Io unleashed another volcano again. It was only a dream? Turns out for all that to happen, it would have to be 0 0.0000. You know what? This much probability. It doesn't even look like it was physically possible for you to grow that size anyway. Nope, you are eternally the janitor of the solar system until the sun dies. And if it gets large enough, it'll strip you to a skeleton with only your core remaining. There's nothing that happens that will make you satisfied with ever being alive. You truly have the worst life ever. But do you?